We'll talk about methods to prepare for polyphasic adaptation. I've seen countless people try this on the Discord and hope to share my knowledge on them with you so you don't make any mistakes. We'll go over a few methods in this video and discuss what effect they will have on your adaptation success rate. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower. I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. I'm also the server owner of the polyphasic Discord and I'm a moderator on the r slash polyphasic subreddit. Today we will start a mini-series addressing the different adaptation methods to polyphasic schedules. And if you enjoy this content, I hope that you show it by liking this video and subscribe if you haven't done that yet, so you don't miss out on any updates in the future. We plan on releasing a lot more polyphasic related content. So the topic of today's video is going to be acceptations. Acceptation in this case describes methods used as a pre-adaptation or before you start your adaptation and refers for ways to prepare for the body for a coming polyphasic adaptation. Adaptation methods that are included here are known as the staying awake before starting method, uh, naptation and recovery. So staying awake before starting. This was the go-to method for polyphasic sleepers in the early days and we'll discuss the community's view on this method later in this video. The idea behind this method is to build up enough sleep deprivation that your naps become immediately or almost immediately effective. The specifics behind this method ask you to stay awake for 24 to 36 hours before jumping into the desired schedule. However, you could just as well build up sleep deprivation in a slower pace for weeks or months at a time and then jumping directly into the desired schedule. So if you want to start sleeping polyphasically and are coming out of a lifestyle with a ton of sleep deprivation on the regular, you're essentially starting an adaptation with the staying awake before starting method. What this method allows you to do is just fall asleep faster and thus get a head start on the adaptation, or in other words, enter stage three faster. However, due to the increased sleep depth that you get on this schedule, you're not going to be able to get out of stage three faster. Uh, so you're essentially prolonging the third adaptation stage, which is consequently also the hardest at the expense of the earlier two stages. Because of the increased duration of the third adaptation stage, this method is only really suggested in a few situations. Uh, for example, when you start a nap only or extreme schedule where falling asleep immediately will be important. Or another situation could be if you are able to make use of human supervision constantly during the adaptation so they can make sure that you aren't falling asleep outside of your desired sleep times. Let's look at the statistics of this adaptation method a bit. During the 2018 polyphasic survey, a question was asked about the success rate of certain adaptation methods. Nine people answered that they had attempted this adaptation method and only four of them said that they had succeeded with it. So this is a success rate of only 44% with a relatively small sample size, especially when compared to the 63% success rate of cold turkey adaptations and 100% of gradual adaptation attempts. Though this is being investigated on a more scientific basis for the 2019 polyphasic survey. So be on the lookout for when we've collected enough data for that analysis. So the current recommendation is to avoid this adaptation method. How should you know if you've started sleep deprived? A notable sign that you're starting with pre-existing sleep deprivation is an excessive tiredness during the first week. Basically, if you pass through the first and second adaptation stages faster than expected, uh, it's a pretty telling sign that you've started with pre-existing sleep deprivation. Another way to test this out is through the sleep onset latency test. What you want to do here is try to nap for 20 minutes with a metal spoon in your hand over a metal plate. When you reach non-REM2, your muscles relax and you drop the spoon on the plate, which makes a sound that wakes you up. You then check for how long it took you to fall asleep and compare it to this chart to see how sleep deprived you are. As you can see, falling asleep within 10 minutes is a pretty bad sign and should be avoided. But as long as it takes longer than that to fall asleep, you should be in the clear. Although I want to point out this method doesn't work when dealing with someone who suffers from insomnia. So other methods would be needed to determine the sleep deprivation level on those people. Still, a majority of people should be able to use this method to test out their sleep deprivation levels. And if you do it, please share your results in the comments below and tell us what you thought about this trick. Anyways, let's hop on to the next acceptation method called naptation. Naptation is a process aimed at teaching people how to fall asleep fast for naps or in some cases how to fall asleep in an uncomfortable situation. Adaptation sleep types greatly resemble that of an Uberman, and adaptation schedule could therefore be called Uberman 8 or Uberman 12, depending on the adaptation method used. Uh, 
Similar to the staying awake before starting method, you start by staying awake for around 36 hours, in this case until you reach second wind, which is a state of feeling alert that lasts for a few hours. Then you start napping for 20 minutes at the end of every break, or once every 2-3 hours. Naptation is done for a number of days until you start falling asleep immediately for the naps, which usually happens at around day 1-3 or when you start getting so REM in your naps, which happens around day 3 to 5. After this is achieved, you switch to the desired schedule, keeping as many of the nap timings as possible, as shown in this picture, where the inner lane is naptation and the outer lane is everyman 3. As you can see here, the naptation schedule has only 11 naps instead of 12 to allow for the sleep times to be kept on every man tree. This method is also valid for people who try to adapt their schedule but fail to learn how to nap in their adaptation process, as well as for people who have no prior experience of napping in their life. During the naptation process, people learn how to fall asleep immediately due to the accumulation of sleep death, and the ability to nap has been anecdotally shown to be a skill that you don't forget later in life. You can compare it to riding a bike, for example. By first doing naptation, one learns how to nap, then recovers for one to two weeks with rid of all the sleep deprivation, and then jumps into the desired schedule. However, this might not work for everyone, so being cautious is advised. If you go for this method, we suggest doing naptation for a bit longer than usual, just to make sure that the skill sticks. So adaptation can be done in order to learn to fall asleep immediately in several uncomfortable situations such as while sitting, in a car, when lying on your back, in case you have issues with that, uh, when lying on an uncomfortable surface, in a cold or warm environment, in a bright room, in a noisy environment, and so on. This can in other words be useful for a few situational purposes. For example, if you're a student and need to be able to fall asleep at school in a sitting position, or something similar. Anyways, that's all for today's video. We'll talk about the acceptation method of recovery in another video, because to be honest, that deserves a video for itself. So tell us in the comments below, would you benefit from doing adaptation to learn to fall asleep in an uncomfortable environment in your current life situation? And would learning that allow you to start a polyphasic adaptation? Describe you what you want to be able to do, and if you actually tried the adaptation adaptation method, uh, let us know how it went. Okay, nap well, people. Hey, I'm Akahana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via our secure Ko-fi page as this helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.